next speaker coming up is Anissa Sabiri, and she's joining us from Tajikistan, where it's plus four hours, I think. And she is a multi-talented writer, photographer, and filmmaker. And she manages to really connect audiences from around the world through the power of art. She started her career as a poet and as a journalist, but she also worked as an art manager, a lawyer, so a very diverse background, and recently as a filmmaker of an award-winning fe feature film. She will be sharing her thoughts on pragmatism and the truth telling in art with us today. Anissa, the stage is yours. Hi everyone, thank you very much for inviting uh, to give a speech. And um, as Maryam said, I, I had a um, very difficult, well, well, different experience, very broad. And uh, finally, I understood that art, in a way, art needs pragmatism. And that's what I want to share with you, uh, giving you some background and why I came to this idea. Um, I was a, ch a child of change. Um, when my mom was pregnant with me, our country was part of the Soviet Union, Tajikistan. By the time I was born, this small mountainous post-Soviet Republic of Tajikistan was falling apart uh, with a terrible civil war in 1990s. While my mom was pregnant, she, she saw dead bodies lying piled up in front of the house. My father was a politician and I, it was too dangerous for us to go out. When I was born, I didn't see sunlight for over the year. The tragic civil war lasted 10 years. More than 200,000 lives were taken and more than 500,000 citizens, many intelligence, des deserted this country of just 5 million. In 1998, peace was formally declared, but the echoes of the war could be heard for much longer. My parents were truly brave people, especially my mom. She was following my father, a, politi a pol political refugee, to other cities and countries. As a child, I experienced the shape and of nationalism um, in, in a lot of hate in different countries where we came to. When we returned to Tajikistan, even in the darkest times of hunger, aimed at all dangers, my parents started a bakery which was working 24 hours per day to feed the people. And I grew up in the atmosphere of bravery, um, high principles and truth telling. Unfortunately, my father couldn't, um, couldn't stay for longer because of the political situation and uh, no support of business um, because of corruption, bureaucracy and tribalism. Um, and these things were destroying him. So he died of cancer when I was 13. He was too young to die and I was too young to give him up. My art is a story of my country through the history of my family the soil which fed me and an individual's loneliness while um, within a hostile system. And um, my art is a story which um, very much is the right of my romantic nature, of course, shaped by Persian, Russian, French literature and uh, would not let me to be silent. I began writing and after some time people started calling me a poet. Uh, when the magazine of the National Union of Writers wanted to publish my poems, the editor asked me why at the age of 13, I, I don't, don't I write about a beautiful landscape or love relationship or just, you know, beautiful things. And in fact, I only could write about death, um, the meaning, meaningless of life and loneliness about social and political injustice, which were the very reasons I wrote at all. The magazine finally published some of my po poems, uh, but some were condemned as too political. Um, and as a young adult poet and freelance journalist, I began learning and reflecting on things that had been kept for me uh, at my Russified school. After a long history of colonization under the Tsarist Russia lands belong belonging to ethnic Tajiks were divided by the Bolsheviks and its jewels such as Samarkand and Bukhara were effectively handed to the Soviets um, when they were made part of Uzbekistan. I also discovered that many of my ancestors, some of them reformers, were repressed and killed by the Soviet regime. Our civil war followed independence in 1991 was always also dominated by the geopolitical interests of bigger countries, such as Russia, for example. And our independence was very fragile because um, 
of this political influence, drug mafia, poverty, lack of education, which is still true, and many, many other reasons which should be told to the world. So I understood that the importance of knowledge as power, I wanted to learn abroad and to return to my country as a person who could make changes and give voice to this power. Um, ironically, the only piece I could afford to, to study was Russia. My mom told me I should have a proper profession, not an artistic one. So following her recommendations, I did a five-year law degree in Moscow Police University. Yeah, this is really funny. Um, and ironically, I truly liked it and even completed it with this high distinction. Uh, but while living in Moscow, my love for my country was flourishing and I lamented its fate. Uh, in Russia, I could see poor Tajik migrants um, with no rights being victims of racist stereotypes. I resolved to take action and even while at the police university, I published critical articles in Tajik newspapers. Um, so I left the police finally and began traveling throughout my country as a tour guide and mountaineer and realized that language nowadays isn't a strong enough language uh, instrument to deliver my messages to the world. I tried photography, art activism, journalism, but wasn't satisfied with this either. In 2016, I was starting to take risks. Um, an article which highlighted corruption and inefficiency in the system, the only one of this kind uh, led to threats and calls, blacklisting, and many other, many other people avoiding me. Even in the arts, a libretto I wrote for the same theater was credited to a different name. I was very upset and scared, and I left the country for Moscow. Soon after, I was, um, well, you know, I was passed that any criticisms, criticism of state policy should be considered as a crime. Perhaps I was lucky to be able to leave the country at all. Um, but I didn't stop. In Moscow, I decided to learn filmmaking and I could only afford two months of study, but was, it was amazingly lucky for me to find a course with a German filmmaker, Fred Kalman, who's a great artist and inspired me a lot to go and shoot my first film. I didn't realize filmmaking was just the right thing to to do for me. I also realized that um, Lost in Moscow, it was very crucial for me to be able to be absorbed in my country, to feel its pulse. And if I wanted to be able to say what I wanted to say, otherwise I would die as an artist. I returned in late 2016 and started making The Crime of Tambour, my first short film. But by, by that time, my student uh, film from Moscow had been well, in a well-known Russian festival, so it was easy for me to find the crew. The Crank of Tambour was about the civil war, which is a sensitive topic and raised a lot of concern to the government, which was suspicious of me, of course. Um, I had to convince the state that I could approach these topics without ca causing any controversy. My first draft was censored, and uh, no surprise, and I had to change it from a strange war story to a psychological drama, set in a wartime country. By, but the essence of the film stayed the same, which is important, I think. I compromised, but it was a pragmatic compromise. If you have a medicine which will heal the patient, uh, why not allow the sponsor to do the branding different? Or better to say, no, I'd rather do it my way and let the patient die, what do you think? So I think it's good to make a medicine and give it to the patient. Um, so in the end, the state compromised as well by, added, by letting such an experience, inexperienced filmmaker as me uh, to approach the subject at all. I'm very grateful for that decision as I became stronger. The crying of Tambour traveled all over the world and helped me to build my profile as a regional film industry. This allowed me to set up a residency for young filmmakers to tell their own stories, which resulted in, as a national film festival. Um, through a local NGO, I got funding for a feature documentary, which is now in post-production. Britons of Lost Time shows how pre-Islamic traditions dating back to Zoroastrianism survived during terrible oppression from Arab, Mongol, Turkic invasion to Bolsheviks and current state restrictions. These ancient traditions were able to survive till now through compromise. People compromised by 
adapting to different things, different times, different rules, changing the names and purposes of their customs, but not their pure essence and quality. Religious fire ceremonies were repurposed as wedding customs, pre Islamic lamentation was redefined as Muslim prayer. I don't say this is ideal, no, not at all, but it worked. The customs survived. And I will tell you that as a child of my land, I'm so grateful for the wisdom of my ancestors, for their strength to be able to compromise and find solutions, to sacrifice selfishness to higher purposes. Sometimes it's too easy to go and fight and destroy rather than to preserve peace. So my documentary touches on some political issues, but it is mostly my way of preserving ancient culture and raising awareness of it, not simply attacking the government that has its own agenda. Last year, I won a German scholarship to study script writing and went in film school. There I developed a script which I now have a producer for. Title again deals with sensitive topics in my country, but taking lessons from my ancestors, I do it in an elusive way. Although I intend to shoot in Tajikistan, I set it in an abstract country with an abstract name, because the topic, the isolation of a broken human being living in a broken country is, an archetype, is very archetypical and universal. In conclusion, I want to say that I see art as a mirror and inner lens, and a lens which enables me to portray truth without being a political statement. Artistic statements that are purely political are in fact propaganda. Art has a role in social change, but it should be not a blunt weapon, I think. And art should show you the truth. It should not tell you the truth. It is pragmatism, but not a compromise. 